I will say boldly that, that sea level rise is going to be the biggest challenge human civilization has ever faced. We've got to start acting now. We have to start acting collectively because I think our entire human future depends on it. People come from all over the world here to see what's happened in Monterey Bay. It's a hub of research activity and scientific knowledge, and Gary is absolutely central to that, of course, looking at all the changes happening on our coast. Back when I was a student, uh, I think I arrived in UCSC at 1970, it was pretty much a dirt lot there with Canoris's remammal tanks and a few things going on. Today, you go down there and it's just a thriving, buzzing hub of research activity with all the agencies that Gary has attracted and it's really just had a huge influence. Gary Griggs he had a tremendous amount to do with UC Santa Cruz being able to move forward with the development of what became the Coastal Science Campus. Gary was fond of saying, here we were, a cool little field station in a beautiful site, surrounded by insurmountable walls of opportunity. Our field station had no permanent water hookup, no sewer hookup, no permanent roads, not enough land to expand on, and no money. Ken Norris conceived of it, Bill Doyle planted the seeds, but Gary nurtured it, watered it, fed it, and made sure that it sprouted into uh, really what we have today. Gary was hands-on all the way in building this facility from the planning stages to when we were working on the first original exhibits, he was the last go-to person to vet the science that went out in the exhibit hall. Yeah, he, he was, has always been part of what we do here. Were it not for uh, Gary Griggs and his ability to really identify the unique features of Monterey Bay and why it was so special, I don't think we would have a Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. He impressed upon me the fact that it's vulnerable, that it's not gonna be there if we aren't good stewards and take care of it. It really inspired me uh, as a member of Congress when I got elected to focus on the importance of not only protecting our ocean, but doing everything necessary to make sure that that Monterey Bay, which was part of my childhood, would be part of my children's and their children's life as well. Taking university science to the people, so to speak, was and is a really important thing to do. I think Gary always viewed it somewhat as an obligation that he had as a university professor and a scientist. He's still a full-time teaching professor, still doing research, still writing, still publishing, and still mentoring students. You can't have a great organization unless you have the support of the community and the financial resources to make it work. And that's what Gary has brought together. It requires leadership to convince the world that this enterprise is worthwhile supporting. That comes out of the kinds of articles that he's written in the newspapers. It comes from uh, the work that he's done with other organizations around the Bay and the many community groups that Gary has visited over the years. When I think of all the things that Gary's done, one of the things that comes to mind as really important is raising our endowment. That supports the Seymour Center long after we're gone. It ensures that their programs go on far into the future. Gary has been at UC Santa Cruz for a very long time, obviously, but over that time he has developed the expertise in this area, the shoreline management, to really become one of those wise authorities when we're talking about these policy questions. Over that time period, you know, I got to know him in my professional capacity as a colleague, but he was soon a mentor to me and uh, now a friend. And I really appreciate his ability to relate to me personally and to always be willing to share his time. Early on, Gary was somebody that I looked up to a lot as a young graduate student and then as a young investigator, seeing how he managed his own research, how he made time for the people around him, how he really was able to be a caring listener and a 
and a really strong leader, you know, he was definitely one of my role models and my heroes when I was young. And now that he is a colleague, I can say that that hasn't really changed at all. He is still one of my um, great role models and one of the great heroes of my life. I have always felt a certain sense of excitement uh, when I would walk in a room and see Gary because I knew he, he had that energy, he had that enthusiasm, he had that focus. There was always something that he had to speak to me about. There was always something he was working on. Uh, and I just felt that Gary is not just a good scientist, which he is, and not just a good teacher, which he is, but just a good human being. And that makes a difference.